Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Texas Hill Country Fishing Report with Greg Wielander of Upstream on the Fly. How you doing, Greg? Well, hi, Marvin. I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, we had just finished receiving the benefits of Hurricane Hannah, which uh, came ashore down south of Corpus Christi um, on the Texas Gulf Coast this past weekend. Um, you know, having a shot of rain at the end of July as, as we go into August is always a, a welcome relief. Um, we didn't see a whole lot of rain, though, probably about a, about three quarters of an inch in, in the hill country. Um about an inch and a half in a few locations, you know, 20 miles or so east of Austin. But for anybody that lives down in South Texas, especially the Rio Grande Valley, they had uh, seen upwards of like 15 inches of rain over, over two days, which, which isn't good. You know, they, they really got hit down there with the rain. Um, but the positive thing of, even though we didn't get as much rain as we wanted, it knocked us out of the, uh, the century mark for daytime highs. So, We've been running in the low 90s, and we're going to limit that out about, about mid-90s for the next seven days. So not bad for finishing August as we go, you know, or finishing July as we go into August. So, Yeah, I like your uh, your positive attitude there. You know, you're in the mid to upper 90s for the next 10 days with basically zero rain. <laughs> and uh, you're like, yeah. it's looking good. Uh, <laughs> That's right, Marvin. I you know, when we get into August, there are days that I'm like, I can't wait till we get back in the nineties. Yeah. You're trying to, to get we'll the, see. yeah. Try to get under the shade of the hawk or the cactus or something. That's right. Um, well, let, well, what does that do to translate into fishing in your neck of the woods? Well, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about a couple, couple waterways. Um, you know, the, the lower Colorado river, you know, which the Austinites, we all refer to it as loco, um, which is, the river come out of Longhorn Dam east of east of town. Actually, has been fishing okay here in the summertime. Um, it's a river I don't spend a lot of time on in the summer. You know, it, more so in the spring and fall and through the winter. But um, the uh, the releases have gotten down to about 5 p.m. At, in the evening. So what that means for an angler, whether it be you know in in my raft or if, if you're de- you know DIY and you're doing some kayaking or canoeing. You've got a, a pretty good window of being able to do a, a trip um, without having to deal with the higher water, um, and it's actually been fishing okay. So keep that keep that in your mind. I know it's it's been a tough river to be on this year, but um, it's coming around a little bit here in the summertime. Yeah, I was going to say, and what drives the release schedule on the loco? Is it basically, is it, is it flood, is it irrigation and kind of flood control or is it like peak power generation? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a couple things you basically touched on them. So one of them, um, was irrigation and that was, that had kind of been, you know, more of a earlier springtime event and they had limited the amount of water that the rice farmers over there on the east side of Houston were allowed to get. And they were saying that, you know, they weren't wanting to send as much water out of Lake Travis as where most of this water is coming from to the rice farmers. But there are a few water rights they've got in place. But um, right now, in the, as the summer, you know, with the AC running, there is some generation of power going on. So that's why at 5 p.m. It, it peaks with with a release, and it's due to power generation. So that's uh, pretty much what's going on um, with the Longhorn Dam there. But let's let's get on to talking about the Llano River. You know, um, that's a that's a body of water I like to spend my summers in because it's uh, perfect for wet wading, and the uh, the rivers. It's, it's, you know, maintained a flow this summer. Um, currently, it's, it's running about 65 CFS out, out around the town of Llano. But this past weekend with, with Hannah, it had jumped up to about 90 CFS out in Mason. So Mason is west of Llano. So all that water is uh, definitely in the watershed coming downstream, which is, which is a good thing. So hopefully we'll see maybe another rain shower or so in, in August, but, um, having water flow in the, in the Llano at this time of year is, is going to be good. Um, I've got a trip coming up this weekend, so 
kind of getting ready for that and thinking along those lines. But um, the San Marcos River is is the other body of water that is is one of my favorites in, in the summertime. It's, it's, you know, the river where I can go float a raft down and um, it's got plenty of shade over the banks and it's spring fed. So um, the water temperatures are more consistent or constant. Um, and it's actually been fishing really well over the last couple of weeks. But, um, you know, what? one of my other summertime favorites is chasing the Rio Grande cichlid. Um, you know, that's something I touched on on our last show. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a fun fish to sight fish for, especially in some of our clear streams like Martin Creek or Brushy Creek. Um, even the Blanco River all have good populations of Rio Grande, Rio Grande cichlids. You know, you can find them even down south, you know, in San Antonio, um, and even farther south than that, like the Frio River or some of those ones that are west of San Antonio. But um, the only other, you know, lake fishing right now is kind of kind of slowed down, except for Lake Bass Drop. So Bass Drop is, is very famous for August because there's a lot of surface activity that go, goes on and the largemouth bass start chasing bait up to the top and, and this is something that goes on during the middle of the day i mean it's 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 pretty cool you know it's it's going on out in the middle of the lake um it's not typically a shore event it's it's more deep water stuff so those are those are all the streams and and, and lakes right now that um i target in the month of august as far as fisheries go. Yeah. And so kind of looking at that, you know, breaking it down, I guess, river fishing tips and techniques, and then lake fishing tips and techniques, how does it all shake out? Yeah. So let's talk about, about the rivers and small streams. So, um, I was talking about the lower Colorado river, you know, right now for streamers, you know, any pattern resembling a a shad has been doing well, you know, like Dave Whitlock has a, fly called the waker shad and it's a uh, made out of deer here and it works really well on an intermediate line you kind of got to get that fly down a little bit to to the fish or or maybe a big deceiver okay with the big dumbbell eyes lefty deceiver gray and white or chartreuse and white and kind of like a size two or size one hook and you know this last week it was it was strange, but top water was actually working on the Colorado River, you know, right up against the banks. You find some shady overhangs, and they were actually munching on frogs. So, any any big dark chartreuse colored uh, popping bug um, has been working well on the Lower Colorado um, for top water. But then let's go back out west and talk about the Llano River, um, the streamers. I like a, a tequila. Okay. So a tequila is a, a woolly bugger variant and it's tied with a yellow marabou for the tail. And it's got uh, round yellow rubber legs coming off the body. There's like, Oh, six rubber legs in total. And then some chenille kind of in a rusty color for the body and size six, or size eight or, or the two sizes I like throwing out on the Lano, but also the white bait fish pattern seems to be where it's at as well. Um, haven't been doing real well with damselflies or dragonfly nymphs, but anything resembling a, a bait fish. And um, there's a pattern I've been tying, and it's it's kind of a white woolly bugger variant. You know, instead of having a hackle palmer down the body, it's got a little tail made out of a maybe little little micro zonker, and then palmer. Um, some estas for the body and, and use some red thread right behind the little cyclops bead. So a little gold bead or a little silver bead will work, but then put a little red thread behind it as a, as a hot spot. And you, you can use dumbbell eyes. You don't have to use a bead, but you know, the top waters out on the Lano, it's, it's either the yellow boogle bug or the, or the yellow Lano bug, but, um, tan, don't forget about tan. Try a tan lano bug this time of year as we get into August because it's uh it, it works possibly a little better than the yellow one that, that I've had luck on going into the end of uh July or as we go into August. But the San Marcos River, that's a uh, you know, the spring fed river out there 
east of town, down southeast of Austin. Um, for streamers, an olive near enough crayfish in, in either size six or an eight is one of my favorites because it's got the dumbbell eyes and it'll, it'll get down a little quicker. And you could use a sink tip if, if you need to get the fly down a little bit faster, if you're not getting any hits, you know, put on a little sink tip. And, you know, plain old chartreuse and white clouser with, with dumbbell eyes is working as well. And for top water, I like a green boogle bug. They seem to kind of key in on frogs. And a green booga bug works real well at this time of year. And if I'm not getting any hits, you know, on a green booga bug, I'll, I'll totally switch over to a fly called the Sneaky Pete. And uh, the one that I like is, is actually yellow. Um, but the Sneaky Pete has got a reversed popper head. So instead of having that cup face forward, you've got the cup facing backwards. And so now you've taken a popper and it's more like a slider. So it's got the, you know, the cone nose going up front. And what that does is it limits you on a popping sound and it's more of a slider. Um, so that little, that little subtle difference sometimes uh, means catching fish or not catching fish. So give that a try if you're out on the San Marcos. And the real grand cichlid, you know, we, we talk about the great rear grand cichlids here in central Texas. And I mentioned it in a past um session and that was you know fly geeks real getter that's that's a hard one to beat but really any small beat head size 12 woolly bugger variant in either olive or black will work just fine on those rear grand cichlids so that's that's about it marvin there you have it there's the uh end of july first of august summertime texas hill country report yeah, well, that's great. It's funny, too. You mentioned the tequila. That's a really popular um, smallmouth fly uh, with a lot of guys here in the uh, kind of the mid-Atlantic. It, it is. You know, um, the Guadalupe bass like them. So uh, I don't know what that yellow triggers, but it's sort of like taking that yellow, you know, booga bug or a yellow uh, lano bug up on top. That yellow seems to be possibly maybe it's like a drowned, uh, drowned hopper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we fish them bigger uh, for smallmouth, like in twos and fours. But uh, I think part of it there is it looks like a crayfish, and it has that nice slow drop. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. And I guess originally that was a Argentinian sea run brown trout fly. Yes, it it definitely um, is in the trout you know trout box for a lot of anglers. Um, but it's worth trying on your warm water fisheries for sure. So crawfish, drowned hopper, whatever it looks like. I, I think fish like rubber legs. There you go. So that's a, uh, that's a trigger. Yeah. And you can get it from fulling mill. And I know Orvis gets them from fulling mill. So if you're looking for tequilas folks, that's where you should go. That's right. Or sit down at your vice and tie some up. There's, there's a video or two online. Yeah. But the trick is right. You have to get a, it's a thicker chenille. Um, at least it is on the bigger ones. It's like, uh, it's more than just kind of fat cactus chenille. Yes, that's, that's right. Um, it is a, a thicker and you've got to trim it, you know, like if you were to try doing it yourself, you know, instead of using, I mean, you could, you could do with a, you know, standard chenille, but the actual the orig original pattern has that thicker side. So it's like they trim it down so that the uh, one side has a thicker, um, body to it, like you were describing. So sometimes it is easier to buy flies like those. Yeah. 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 Particularly when you have so few hours to fish cause it's so hot and you got to get out early. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, folks, we love questions at the articulate fly. If you'll send them to us, whatever way is easiest for you, probably the easiest for us is our Instagram or our Facebook page. Uh, if we use your question, um, I'll send you some articulate fly swag and you'll get it into a drawing for something really cool uh, from Greg at the end of the season. And uh, before I let you hop, Greg, why don't you let folks know where they can find you on the internet so they can uh, book you, sweat with you, and fish with you. There we go. Um, my website, upstreamonthefly.com. And then over on social media, both on Instagram and Facebook, as Upstream on the Fly. Well, there you go. Well, listen, folks, do your best to stay cool. Uh, get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Greg. Thanks. Thanks.